Look at what the hell is that? Got absolutely stuck on this port. All right, so this video, as titled, we are replacing the head gasket on our 6.7 liter Cummins Ram 3500 pickup truck. So I will always keep things 100% with you guys. But yes, this truck that we just picked up, it needs a head gasket. So right when I was buying it, I mean, I'm not mad about it. It is what it is. Um, uh, what caused it, I don't necessarily know. Um, it does have head studs on it. So I'll show you guys those as we remove them. So this engine has been bulletproofed by the previous owner, um, took it to shop or whatnot, but it's got head studs on it. I don't see a name brand on them. So that could be part of the problem. Somebody's been in here, you know, maybe they didn't torque things down properly. I don't really know, but what I do know is when I was test driving the truck, this was low. So if you guys, uh, I think I made a video on it actually. I ended up having to flush out the cooling system. It was kind of nasty and it was actually low. So I cleaned out that bottle. It had some kind of sludge in it, but changed it. And right now I even changed the thermostat. I didn't show you guys that video, but I put a brand new Cummins thermostat, not an aftermarket one in. And what'll happen is while you're driving, the temperature will rise and then it'll fall drastically. So the more you step on it, the more the temperature goes up. What I did do, and I'll put it up on the screen here, is I used one of those block tester kits um, where essentially you put it on your coolant system, you pull in gases from your cooling system, and if there's any combustion gases in your cooling system, those vapors will mix with the blue dye and they'll turn it color. So mine turned green, meaning I have a small or slight head gasket leak. It's not enough to be blowing smoke at the tailpipe. I'll tell you guys that much, but it's enough that a little bit of combustion gases are pressurizing my cooling system and it's essentially aerating my cooling system and it's causing all sorts of coolant leaks. You can see here, I've got dried out pink dots all the way down here and it keeps pushing the coolant out. So we gotta put a head gasket in. Um, I'm gonna be using some premium products for this, you guys. I got the fine folks at P1 to work with me on head studs for this. So these head studs are top notch, you guys. These guys make all sorts of products for top race teams across the country. And I'm glad that they actually make a product for this because I don't wanna hopefully have to do this again. So I'll show you guys those once we get deep into the install. This is my first 6.7 engine project. So bear with me. I'm not gonna go into total detail on it because I don't claim to be an expert at this engine at this point. Um, but I'm gonna show you guys what we're doing with it. It's gonna be a big job taking the head off. I'm gonna send it off to the machine shop. Um, they're gonna check it and also check it for any micro cracks or anything like that. If it needs to be you know, planed or anything like that, they'll do that. So we got a lot of work ahead of us. Let's tear this thing down. We're gonna drain the coolant, start taking everything off, and then uh, yeah, get into replacing the head gasket on a 6.7 Cummins in a Ram pickup truck. Okay, little update for you guys. Coolant is obviously drained into the five gallon bucket. Took this wheel off so that I could actually get to, you'll probably see some of these exhaust manifold bolts here. And then that, there's these stupid metal things on here that are fun to get off. But I got the back two right there. I got those and then this bottom one. So on our last cylinder six and then the bottom of five, I got those bolts out through there. Turbo staying attached to the manifold. And then if you look over here, so I ended up taking the manifold off and then the turbo staying attached to the manifold, like I mentioned. Um, had to disconnect the alternator here and then took out all the bolts on that. Took off our upper water pipe here. Um, there was a pulley right here. And then there's a few bolts that hold this harness right here on. Took off the upper valve cover, um, crankcase ventilation. And then this here, it's a gasket and the kit that I got actually has a brand new one of these. So this gasket is actually integral and a wire harness all in one. So the gasket doesn't come off, but the uh, Molly gasket kit that I got, it has this wire harness. This goes out to all your injectors and that's the plugs for it. So I took that off, took off our intake. Um, somebody has been in here, like I think I mentioned, some of the bolts were tight, some of them were almost loose. Like probably no wonder why I'm dealing with a head gasket because definitely wasn't professionals that were uh, working on this before. 
but you can see here they put RTV on this rather than replacing the gasket so there was some gray RTV on this so that was kind of fun to get off and then what I'm doing now is just using a 19 um, using one of these line wrenches so we don't strip these and just cracking all of our fuel injector lines here so I'm gonna take all these fuel injector lines off um, because this manifold here it's actually on the head so we kind of have to disconnect it and you also have to take out um, these guys here so these are the tubes that feed into the injectors and in order to pull the injectors out you gotta take the tubes out so um, and I haven't taken or done anything with the rockers yet so we'll have to take the preload off the rockers and uh, take all the rockers assemblies out as well so lots of stuff but let me keep going and I'll keep updating you guys all right so I got this off the lower valve cover and then I was taking off some of the fuel lines but um, again, I'm learning, so that's why I'm not doing like a, hey, you should do this and follow everything I do video. But I know what has to come off, um, just, you know, sequence and stuff like that. So it's looking a lot more bare here. Um, those back two lines are a SOB to get to. <laughs> I will tell you that. And whoever was in here last, like, cranked the living heck out of them. So I'm doing my best to get back there, but they're, like, ungodly tight. So... Taking this lower cover off gives us more room and accessibility to that. Um, but I think to give myself even more room, if I take the rocker assemblies out, um, along with the push rods, it'll give me just that extra tiny little bit as well. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead, take these off, give myself a little bit of room. You can see here too, um, definitely wanna adjust our valve lash because I think that to me looks a little loose. Just the fact that there's barely any preload on this thing like at all so um we'll see it's probably loose on the preload i would say so we could probably quieten things up as well um i don't know if i told you guys this thing has like the hamilton cam or so i was told so um it kind of went in 19 and 20 uh cummins went to a different i guess cam and lifter setup which was i guess quieter but known to fail and then, so this has been allegedly reverted back to the older style um, with a Hamilton cam setup. But you do have to adjust your valves um, doing it this way, which you had to before anyways. But yeah, um, I'm gonna go ahead and take these all off, keep them in the proper sequence, and then uh, we'll readjust the valves once we put this thing all back together. All right, so I cracked all the adjusters loose and then just to keep track of everything, one through six, I just put these tick marks here with a paint marker, so one, two ticks, three ticks, four, five, and so on. Obviously six in the back, just so in case anything gets mixed up. I'm gonna lay them in the uh, valve cover upside down in order, but regardless, at least I've got something to reference. So take all those out, as well as the push rods. If you guys have or haven't seen, there's some rubber grommets in the underside of the cowl there to get the uh, back push rods out. So. We'll take out those grommets so we can get those push rods out and take all this out. All right, so head is finally ready to come off, you guys. Um, it's a lot of work. And um, not that it's, I mean, the labor is one thing as far as, you know, the amount of work it is. But the most challenging part of this job is the fact that this engine is so long and it is tucked underneath there. Like, you have to have, like, the engine itself is probably almost two feet long. So by the time you're standing at the front of the truck if i'm fully extended right here it just gets to the front so you have to like full-on dive into the engine bay you can use those creepers where it's like a truck creeper where it comes up and over but even still you're gonna be full extension with your arms trying to get to the back and then if you're on one of those creepers trying to get leverage like taking all those head bolts out i don't know what torque was on those it felt like 250 foot pounds because i had to get a like two foot breaker bar and i was muscling it just to get them to crack loose so anyways everything should be ready to lift out i got a chain across the two lift points um we'll see if i potentially need to take anything off but as far as i can tell everything is good so fuel lines are off they're out of the way took the fuel line off the back of the head obviously took my banks plate off of there the grid heater delete deal thing whatever you want to call it and yeah let's go ahead and lift this thing out all right so we got the cherry picker and got the head up but look at what the hell is that is that a piece of a rag i am so confused right now what the hell is that thing 
I just fell out of the head. Let's go see. I'm gonna get this out of here. Let's see. It's. I don't know if you guys can see that. Look at this. It's like stuck in there. Did somebody literally forget a rag in here? Oh my gosh. You guys. That is a rag, I think. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? It's like jammed in the port. Is this real life? Look at it. What the hell is that? Well, let's get the head out of here. <laughs> and then we'll investigate more. This is insane. Okay, cylinder head is off. It doesn't end there, you guys. Look at this here. I don't know what this is, but it is stuck in the cooling port. I'm gonna have to investigate what this little thing is. Bring it over to the bench under the light, but something was stuck in that cooling port. All right, so whatever this is, it is stuck in here real good, but Let's see if it comes up with the head gasket. We'll inspect the head gasket too once we get it off, see if we see any indications. But the bridges here are so thin that usually they blow right through here and get into those cooling ports. I don't know, is that a cooling port? I'm not super familiar with coming stuff. Let's see. Okay. There's a lot of layers to this. Well, it's jammed in there. Look at that. That has to be some sort of rag. Yeah, it's just trapped in there. That's definitely a cooling port because it's a water jacket. So if I was a betting man, I would have to say that this coolant jacket that's blocked probably was not helping our head gasket issue. <laughs> because if you look, you got these passages but this is the main one that passes coolant around cylinder 2 and it was completely blocked not good jeez look at that it's stuck I want to kind of go and see it looks like one of those like red towels to me I mean I know the coolant's pink so that could have contributed to it oh man that's disgusting all right guys, so it is the next day, maybe even two days later actually. So cylinder head is off. I'm gonna clean it up. I'm not gonna bore you guys with that part. Um, and I sent the cylinder head over to the local machine shop. They're gonna go ahead, go through it. Um, they're basically gonna surface it for us, make sure everything is good. And they're also gonna check for any micro cracks or anything like that. So that's getting done. I got brand new head studs here. My gasket kit just showed up, but let me show you guys. Right now the shop is an absolute disaster, so don't mind the mess. We're working on a million different things. Um, I've got a bunch of parts laid about. I got to clean everything, get everything ready for reassembly. But let me show you guys that head gasket. So I got all my fuel injectors laid about here underneath there. This is the head gasket. So you can see here like this rubberized coating um, that's usually on the head gasket. It is absolutely non-existent on any of these bridges that go between the cylinders. Um, you can see it's kind of just broken down, honestly. But um, yeah, who knows how hot this thing got, but somebody's been in here not that long ago i managed to scrub this off it does look like it's an oem head gasket because this part number actually references a 19 and up oem head gasket but yeah this rag it looks like some kind of rag that somebody stuffed in here got absolutely stuck on this port or cooling passage on the head gasket so you can see there now let me flip this around and get into my I guess concern so while I wait for the cylinder head to get back from the machine shop right now it is a Friday and the machine shop hasn't gotten back to me I dropped it off yesterday morning being Thursday so um, I should get the head back somewhere in the beginning of next week so but I wanted to get this video out for you guys my concern is is there going to be any more paper 
uh, rags, anything like that, somewhere else in the cooling system. I think I'm at least gonna pull the water pump, see if there's anything in there, but what I'm kind of concerned about is, is there anything else that's gonna all of a sudden try to make its way and get stuck in the head gasket like you just saw there? Or is there potentially rag or debris of remnants of a rag stuck in the radiator in one of the end tanks in the core? So did it manage to get all this way to the radiator and then it's stuck in the end tank up against the radiator core where all the tube and fins and whatnot are? I don't know how far I should take this. Comment down below what you guys would do. It's, I don't know, it's a weird situation. Who knows what is going on in there? Hopefully it's just that one rag, but it could be more. So let me know what you guys would do in this situation. Give this video a thumbs up if you guys found it entertaining or informative. And uh, I'm gonna post the install video for you guys on part two of this series. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you're subscribed and we'll catch you guys in the next video when I put this thing back together. But a bunch of other stuff on the channel too. If you guys are stopping by for the first time, we are Hellcat swapping this 68 bodied car. We've got our hurricane powered Viper ACR, all kinds of stuff on here. We'll see you guys in the next video.